Hey guys, welcome back to Loft Sports. It's Tyler. It's that time of year again. I can't hardly believe um, we're in late August. There's actually college football on this coming Saturday. Uh, Nebraska and Northwestern play. There's a couple other Power 5 teams of note that are playing games. Uh, really, that Nebraska game is the only one that's really worth watching. But the fact that there's college football on this weekend, we actually have our Fantasy League draft this Sunday. I'm super excited. Football is here. It's right around the corner. So I'm going to do a couple of videos today. The first one is going to just be a season prediction video where I'm just going to do a quick, brief, game-by-game -game prediction of what Notre Dame's uh, 2022 record is going to be, who I think we're going to beat, who I think we're going to lose to, if anybody, and uh, you know, just kind of a what's a realistic expectation for this upcoming season under first-year coach Marcus Freeman, got a new quarterback in, a um, lot of things to look forward to. So we're going to start with the Ohio State game. I'm not going to talk too much about this in this video because I plan on doing an Ohio State video either later tonight or later in the week. So if you want more in-depth content on that, I'll put out an Ohio State video just talking about Ohio State. Obviously, this is a huge game. Notre Dame's fifth in the preseason AP poll. Ohio State's second. Top five matchup. Ohio State's going to be at home. They've got an established program with Ryan Day. Obviously, C.J. Stroud is on everybody's short list for a Heisman pick and as a first-round draft pick. They're going to have the advantage in a lot of ways. This is a big ask for Marcus Freeman in his first true game as head coach. I know he was the head coach in the bowl game against Oklahoma State. But look, I mean, that was kind of a weird short notice. Kelly leaves in the middle of the night for LSU. Yes, Freeman was the head coach, but... In a way, this is really his true first game. He's had months to prepare, an entire offseason, first offseason recruiting class, first offseason with spring practice, and having to name a quarterback. This is his team for the first time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I think Notre Dame loses this game. This is a big ask for a first-year young head coach, and it's not like he was a head coach at another school. This is really his first time being a head coach. He was not a head coach that came from a group of five or a smaller power five. He's been a defensive coordinator, and that's all he's known. So the fact that he's going to be coaching in his first true head, head coaching experience – against a guy that's been there for four or five years with a Heisman-level quarterback. You know Ohio State's going to have great players on defense and offense everywhere. They just recruit at that level. Hopefully in a couple years we keep recruiting like we have been. We'll be at that level. But I think right now Ohio State's just got so many advantages, so I'm going to pick Ohio State to win that game. Then we play Marshall, come home for the home opener. Listen, there's no excuse Notre Dame should lose to Marshall. Marshall's one of those teams where they win seven, eight games a year. They're a pretty stable program as a group of five, but there's really no reason even starting over at head coach and quarterback that Notre Dame shouldn't really blow Marshall out of the water. Then we play Cal. Cal's a tricky team. Notoriously, their defense is very stout. They have one or two playmakers on each side of the ball that's that's pretty good, but they just don't have the depth and they just don't have the talent across the board. They really shouldn't even be in this game. It's, it's a home game for Notre Dame. I think we should win this game going away. So we'll bounce back with the win against Marshall and then another win against Cal sitting at two and one. Then we go to North Carolina, and I'm actually planning on attending this game in person since I live about an hour away from Chapel Hill. I'm really excited for this game. I was at the UNC Notre Dame game in South Bend last year, made the long drive from North Carolina. Man, I, I think this is a tricky game for Notre Dame. North Carolina was a team last year with Sam Howell. They were a top 10 team preseason, and then they kind of struggled out of the gate, lost some games early finished like 6-6 six and six or something like that, had a really bad season for what they were expecting. This year, the expectations are flipped. Nobody is really expecting North Carolina to be any good. It's NC State that's the local team here um, that's getting all the hype and preseason love. This should be a win for Notre Dame, but this is a little bit of a tricky game. It's on the road. North, Notre Dame's notoriously, I think we're like 21-1 all-time against North Carolina in football. This sm smells like a trap game. The BYU game is the week right after. I, I think Notre Dame will win this game, but it will be a dogfight. North Carolina's got some skilled players. They've recruited well on the interior lines here under Mac Brown. Mac Brown's a good coach. He knows how to prepare his team, even though he will be out-talented for the most part. I expect a lot of fight from UNC. I almost want to mark this one down as a, as a trap game, but I'm going to give Notre Dame the benefit of the doubt because of our defense. 
defense. I really think our defense is going to be the key to this year's team. So I think we get the win and go to 3-1. and one. Really wanted to go to this game in Vegas against BYU, but the tickets when I looked them up earlier in the summer were just astronomical, and it's too far for driving, so I'd have to fly. Really wanted to go to this game because I got a buddy in Vegas. We were going to try to go, but just just not feasible with prices of everything at this time. But BYU. Notre Dame, BYU. BYU's always been a tricky team. They kind of feel like they're the Notre Dame of the West. So I think this is going to be a slugfest. BYU always plays teams tough. They, they're, they're not as talented as some of these other teams on the schedule, but they are physical. They play hard-nosed football. They're fundamentally sound. They've just got raw talent. Their head coach has actually done a pretty good job of maintaining that program. When Bronco Mendenhall left, I thought they would kind of start to stumble. They've been a consistent 9-10 win team over the last few years. And even last year without Zach Wilson, uh, they're proving that it's more of a program thing and not just they had a good quarterback. I think this is a dogfight, but BYU doesn't scare me offensively too much. I think now they've put up points. I saw them score a zillion against Virginia last year, but I just think our defense, I'm going to hang on that a lot in these picks. I think our defense is going to be good enough to keep us in the game, and I don't think they can get out ahead to where we feel like we have to win a track meet. I think we beat BYU and go to four and one. Stanford at home. That should be a relatively easy win. I actually kind of respect Stanford quite a bit, um, but I think David Shaw is probably going to be in his last year at Stanford. That's kind of a bold prediction of mine for the entire landscape of college football this year. I think David Shaw ends up um, probably getting fired from Stanford at the end of the season. They've had a few now three, four win years consecutively. Stanford is, is very patient, and they know that they have a good coach, but you can only have so many bad seasons in a row. It's not like they're seven or eight win years. Four win seasons just aren't going to cut the mustard out there. I think we beat Stanford. They're kind of re- they just don't really feel like they have an identity since the 2016 team with Christian McCaffrey. They've been kind of milling in mediocrity. We should be okay against Stanford. I expect them to play exactly how they always do, physical, good interior, uh, line play, fundamentally sound, maybe one or two skill players that you got to watch out for. But overall, I don't feel like this is that Stanford team that is a dark horse playoff team, you know, that, that they have been in, in years prior. I think this is going to be more of what we've seen the last two or three years. So this should be a relatively easy win for Notre Dame. Then we play UNLV. Look, it, there should be no doubt about that. That should be an automatic win. Then we go to Syracuse. I, I I feel like this is an under-the-radar trap game. I said this about North Carolina, but this is only the third real true road game for Notre Dame at this point in the season, and it's right before Clemson. Syracuse is not going to be good, but for whatever reason, when you put them in that carrier dome, I've seen good Clemson and LSU teams go up there long way. It's almost in Canada, Syracuse is. Playing in that dome, it, it just feels like they're in the game, even though they're not as talented, they're not as physical, they're probably not as well coached. Syracuse has found ways to give good teams fits. I think Notre Dame needs to be careful with this game. Don't be looking ahead to the Clemson matchup the next week with everything still to play for because you can lose to Ohio State and still make it to the playoffs at 11-1. and one. This is a sneaky game. I almost want to say Syracuse wins this, but I'm going to talk myself out of it because I think Notre Dame's defense, again, even with a young quarterback, Syracuse did lose a lot of players off of last year's team, and even though last year's team wasn't anything special, I feel like Syracuse is going to be competitive in this one, but we'll pull away late. So I think Notre Dame does defeat Syracuse and and move to, uh, what is that, 7-1. and one. Then the Clemson game. Listen, the logical thing to say would be, well, Clemson's going to have the better, better, more experienced quarterback. They're probably going to be just a little bit more talented across the board than Notre Dame, and they should be. I mean, they've won two national championships in the last six years. But I think Clemson is getting a pass where they shouldn't. DJ Ungalungale, the, the kid looked phenomenal when he stepped in for Trevor Lawrence a couple years ago against us in that thrilling overtime game. But last year, from the first game against obviously a very good Georgia defense, 
he looked totally uncomfortable. I mean, he did not look good against very many teams. And I've watched a fair amount of Clemson games. I watched them play BC. I watched them play NC State. And they should, they, they, he just didn't look comfortable. I don't know what's going on in DJ's head, if it's a mental thing or if their offensive line play is just really that poor. But I think, I think Notre Dame beats Clemson simply for the fact, again, I hate to sound like I'm beating the drum here, but the defense should be our strength. And they have not impressed me last year offensively. They had to kind of flounder their way to a lot of wins. They kind of got lucky. And to be truthful, the ACC is just not that good. And and last year, I think they got to nine wins simply because the teams they were playing just couldn't figure out a way to score. And, and their defense will be very good, but I don't know if it'll be quite as good as it was last year. I think Notre Dame wins this game. I really do. I think it's at home. If it was at Clemson, different story, but it's in South Bend. Notre Dame is going to be confident because they've beat Clemson with DJ at quarterback prior. I know that was two years ago, but it does have a mental thing to say, hey, we beat these boys. We can square up and hang hang with them and beat them again. Then we play Navy. Navy's been a team that really has not stayed on the field with Notre Dame. I know we kind of flounder around with them and keep them in games, and they're, they're a tough team to prepare for because of the triple option. It's right after the Clemson game. This might not be such an easy win, but Navy has not been Navy for a while. They, they've, they're they just not quite as as good. I mean, they used to be an 8-9-10 win team, and they used to scare me to death every year. Really, the last four or five years, we've had pretty good success keeping them at bay. I think no different this year with the defensive line we've got. I think Foskey and those boys will keep Navy's offense from getting too much success. I think we beat Navy. BC late in the year at home always scares me. They've ruined so many seasons for Notre Dame coming in on senior day, the 93 season when I was two years old, the 2002 season with Tyrone Willingham when we were undefeated. We just beat Florida State down in Dope Campbell. We come home and BC upsets us because we wore the damn green jerseys. I think this year, though, Notre Dame's passed any ghosts of, of yesteryear. I think Notre Dame beats Boston College. It might be a dogfight. It might be 27 to 26 walking out on a last second field goal kind of like last year we did several times see Florida State and Virginia Tech BC is a competitive team but I think we're good enough to overcome any deficiencies unless we just completely shoot ourselves in the foot so that leaves us at 10 and 1 going into USC and this is a tough one I have gone back and forth on this game all year but for some reason when I look at Notre Dame in 2022 uh, the the thing that comes to mind is this is a 10 and 2 football team. They're not good enough to go into Columbus and beat Ohio State and they're certainly not good enough even if they beat Ohio State to run the table and go 12 and 0. This team is probably a 9 or 10 win team and I've got them at 10 and 1. I I don't think USC is going to be a playoff team in year 1 under Lincoln Riley. But I just don't, there's something about this. There's been a few Notre Dame fans that I know that have been kind of posting things every day. It's been 2,000 days since we've lost to USC. Be careful poking the bear. They've got a real coach for the first time in a long time, and they can turn a program around with the transfer porter and, and portal and good coaching. It doesn't take long for a pristine program like Miami, like Texas, like Oklahoma, like USC. If they can get some players in there and a guy that knows how to win with players, even if they're all not five stars, I just don't think Notre Dame can win 11 games. I want to say we beat USC and lose to somebody else, but I just don't think any of these other games, with the exception of Clemson, we're going to stub our toe so I have to pick USC in this game because I don't think we're going to go 11 and 1 because if we go 11 and 1 with a loss to Ohio State as long as it's not 47 to 10, we'll be in the playoff. But I don't think we're going to the playoffs with a first year quarterback and a first year coach. So I have to pick Southern Cal and it makes me want to vomit. I'd much rather lose to Syracuse and beat USC, but I I I just USC they bring Caleb Williams from Oklahoma. He's obviously very good. I just have a feeling that think USC is going to catch lightning in a bottle. Now, next year, I, I, this you this is another bold prediction. USC and Notre Dame is about to take off. It is about to be the rivalry of college football. Remember how LSU and Alabama was kind of the game every year for a few years? 
and it still is to a lesser degree. Michigan beats Ohio State. Now everybody's talking about, oh, well, the Michigan-Ohio State game. Listen, Michigan's won one game in the last, what, 16, two games in the last 17, 18 years against Ohio State. USC Notre Dame, I think, are getting ready to go back and forth. And this is going to take off as the playoff expands, as USC goes to the Big Ten, Notre Dame potentially goes to the Big Ten. I think USC and Notre Dame is going to be a hot rivalry for the next four or five years because Marcus Freeman and Lincoln Riley are two great coaches. We're, we're on the defensive coaching side. They're on the offensive coaching side. We're recruiting well, really well. I know Lincoln Riley's going to bring players there. I feel like Notre Dame USC is about to take off. And I think this win for USC ignites them to a potential playoff berth. And I think it ignites them into the national top 10 picture again. And I think Notre Dame and, and USC are going to both be top 10 programs for the next foreseeable future, few years anyway, um, barring something drastic. So 10-2, and two, another New Year's Six Bowl. Hopefully we can win a damn New Year's Six Bowl for once. I don't really know who probably – is the Orange Bowl one of the playoff games this year? Um, I, probably an Orange Bowl appearance or another Fiesta Bowl appearance. I'd love to say we win it, but it depends on who we play. I think that's a reasonable expectation with a first-year quarterback, first-year head coach, very talented team. Some NFL players on, on both sides of the ball, but a depleted receiving core. We lost Avery Davis a few weeks ago. He's out for the season again. Let's let's not get out ahead of our skis. Let's be realistic. Let's set a realistic expectation for Coach Freeman in his first year. I'm very excited for the future of Notre Dame football. I feel like we have a chance against Ohio State. Uh, whereas Brian Kelly was coaching, I'd be like, yeah, we'll probably lose 48 to 24. But I think Freeman's bringing a swagger and a confidence with these guys. The Vegas video was fun for the BYU Shamrock Series game, having to find the jersey. I think it's a good balance of fun but seriousness. It's it's a business trip, but we're going to have fun playing football. It almost feels like we're looser as a program. Under Kelly, I felt like in these big games we get a little bit tight. Like, oh god, we're playing oh we're playing Clemson. Got to be perfect all the time. Everything's got to be laser focused. Sometimes you got to back up and have fun. You these kids are in college. They got a lot of pressure on them academically and athletically. Let's take a step back. Let's have fun. Let's get loose a little bit. Let's go out there and play with some swagger and some style and not be afraid to get punched in the face and not be afraid to punch somebody back when they punch you in the face. I think this Notre Dame team is better off without Brian Kelly the more days that go by, and I think we're going to see that in a couple of years, especially at when you, when he's at LSU and, and Freeman takes over at Notre Dame. I'd be interested to see who... Who feels like they got the better end of that deal uh, in a couple years? But Ohio State video dropping later, 10 and 2, let's go Irish.